Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, December 4th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. If you're installing anti-malware on your systems, there are a couple of techniques that anti-malware often uses in order to verify whether or not a website that you're browsing to is malicious. Now, some antivirus solutions implement little proxies. In the past, we had vulnerabilities in some of these proxies because they didn't properly filter which requests they accepted. The second method is, of course, a browser plugin. And that's the route that Avast went with its online security and also its Avast Secure Browser, which is really just Firefox with these extensions pre-installed. Now, the problem with Avast was that whenever you visit a website, the entire URL is reported back to Avast. Now, you may say, hey, uh, they actually need to know the URL in order to figure out if it is malicious. Well, other tools like uh, most notably Google Secure Browsing don't report the actual URL back. Instead, they do report a hash of the URL, making it more difficult, maybe even impossible to fully reconstruct a user's sessions. Also, if a URL is already known as malicious and that can be checked locally based on periodically updated blacklists, then of course there is no need to report the URL back to the mothership, so to speak. Because uh, this particular behavior of Avast uh, was considered to be too intrusive, Mozilla now has blocked uh, this Firefox add-on from its extension is list so you cancel install it uh, but it's no longer listed in the firefox add-on uh, directory the plugin is also available for chrome and other browsers directly from the avast.com website and Google released its December update for Android and it fixes again a couple of critical vulnerabilities, no surprise here. The media framework, of course, is affected here. Now, the media framework vulnerabilities are only critical for Android 8 through 9. If you're using Android 10, then these vulnerabilities are also considered moderate, not critical. Kind of interesting that a denial of service vulnerability in the framework is considered critical on Android 8 through 10. Part of the reason why it's considered critical is because it's a permanent denial of service according to Google. So essentially breaking the phone with a simple message. And talking about Android, security company Lookout and Promon have released details regarding a vulnerability in Android that they're calling Strandhog. This vulnerability allows malicious applications to display dialogues in the UI of other applications. The reason this is problematic is that if you are, for example, using a legitimate banking application, the malicious application can now display a login dialogue on top of that banking application that is really not distinguishable from the legitimate login dialogue for this banking application. Now, what makes this thing worse, and that's sort of where Lookout comes in, the vulnerability was found by Promon. Lookout is a company that sort of makes a security software for mobile devices, and they scanned the Android, the Google Play Store for applications that took advantage of this vulnerability. And they already found 36 malicious applications that were using exactly this scheme. They're using the strand hawk vulnerability in order to harvest banking credentials. This particular vulnerability has not yet been patched by Google, does not appear to be patched in the update that was released today. However, the affected applications have been removed from the Google Play Store. 
And Mozilla released Firefox version 71. Actually, what's sort of notable here is that we don't have a critical vulnerability that's being fixed here. The highest vulnerability level here is high, which usually means that it will just crash the browser and is not exploitable in the form of code execution. I still would recommend that you update Firefox. A couple of the vulnerabilities are memory corruption vulnerabilities or use after free vulnerabilities, where it says that it's likely limited to a denial of service. So there is a chance that someone will come up with a code execution exploit for these particular vulnerabilities. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. Now, I will be giving here a talk in San Francisco on Thursday evening. If anybody would like to attend, uh, we have a limited number of seats here. So please uh, send me an email and uh, I'll see what I can do to get a couple guests uh, here for the talk that are not attending the conferences. I'll be speaking about some of the TLS issues like DNS over HTTPS and uh, TLS 1.3. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.